So my Casper journey is going on, is going on pretty well. I feel confident enough to make a first video of the first finding that I had in order to help me and you understand better whether this technology actually works and keeps his words or not. Let me tell you what I found out so far. So hi everybody and welcome to a new blockchain cafe. Um, I will start talking about Caspa and about the first finding that I made so far. Uh, by far the first and foremost element that I found is that studying Caspa helped me understand better Bitcoin. It is very, very interesting to see all the similarities and differences in between those two technologies. And by looking at Bitcoin from Caspa point of view and, and the other way around as well is very very interesting because it really gives me the opportunity to go deeper in all the concepts and make comparison make differences so uh, even challenge my own belief and i've been challenging my own point of view and try to go deeper in that it is it is absolutely amazing one thing that i want to stress out is that as well i don't see any competition and any rivality between bitcoin and ethereum the same thing goes for caspa i don't see any war going on any versus thing about bitcoin and caspa unless fanboys are involved they have their own different spaces they have a lot of similarities there is absolutely no point in trying to put up a word that is not even meant to be there in the first place this video is going to be about the DAG, which are the differences between a DAG and a blockchain uh, whether the choice and can influence the design which are the result of those influences and so on just to give you an, an idea one of the things that i like very much is the fact that whenever i look at caspa i see that the rules of caspa actually are very similar to the rules of bitcoin somehow they even look like the same rule in a different dress but the the substance the essence of the rules remains the same and this is very good because it makes me think that the guys at caspa thought about it and even if you are to say that they copied bitcoin this is fine because i mean bitcoin works it's, it's perfectly fine to copy the things that work on bitcoin and add something that you like most. Let's start by looking at the difference between the definition of a blockchain and a DAG. In a blockchain, we all know you basically have a block and the basic rule is that you have a link to the previous block and you can just link one block. Uh, this is actually the rule. Uh, it may happen, it's not desirable and many protocols fight against that, it, that a block has two different children, meaning two different blocks that points at the same block, but this can totally happen. It happened in the past, uh, sometimes it happened because developers want it, uh, sometimes it's just absolutely accidental. The blockchain may happen to split, but in the end it will lose one splitting part and so on. While the definition of the DAG is that in a DAG a block can and must point to multiple previous blocks that precede him. And of course it will be pointed by several blocks in the future so it's like to say that you have a monodimensional row of blocks in the blockchain and you have a b-dimensional DAG of blocks in a DAG um, so it's like going from one dimension to the other mathematics remains the same but sometimes you use this mathematic on in a monodimensional space or you use it on a b-dimensional place and things change a bit there so in a blockchain you may have those forks but you don't want those forks to happen while you accept them and somehow want them to happen in a DAG. Why you don't want the, the forks to happen on a blockchain like for example in Bitcoin? Because if you look at the white paper the first thing that is written is that in order to achieve Bitcoin you need a time stamping service and the idea of the blockchain is being the, exactly that time stamping service meaning that you have blocks and you, have, you know which blocks are before and you know which blocks are after. So you have a stream of blocks that tell you the history of the transactions. And we must achieve exactly the same thing in a DAG. Can we do that? What are the differences? Well, the difference is that in a blockchain, you have this ordering of the blocks and the transactions inside this block during the construction phase of the blockchain. Meaning that every time a miner adds a new block and supposing that there is no forks or other stuff 
while you build the blockchain, you build the ordering itself. While on a DAG, you all offer multiple blocks to happen at the same time. And when this happens, you have a partial ordering of the blocks inside the DAG because some blocks are obviously after another if they point to the block or, if, or they are before another block if they are pointed by another block. But it might happen that there are some blocks that are difficult to put in order because, I mean, both orders could be valid, A before B or B before A. So what happens in a DAG is that when you build the DAG, you have a partial ordering of the blocks and the protocol of the nodes afterwards completes the ordering of those blocks. While on the blockchain, the ordering phase and the creation phase are the same. So this is the first difference. So creation phase and ordering phase is the same thing on the blockchain. There are two different phases when it comes to DAGs. They build in a semi-ordered way and after the ordering comes after with the consensus protocol. This is the first thing. But why do you want that? Why, why do you even want that? Because the point is that the blockchain itself has a problem of uh, throughput. And this is a problem that has to do with security, meaning that if you allow a blockchain to be faster in block production than a certain amount of blocks per second, for example, you will have issues with security. I talk to, about this with uh, Guybrush, with Giacomo Zucco, and what turns out is that uh, there could be more centralization, there could be uh, an unpredictable supply that could because you, you, the miners doesn't really know if he won the price for that block or, or not. Uh, you can have multiple forks, fork of forks, and those fork of forks could lead to double spending because if, if a mess happen on in a blockchain becomes a tree of blocks, anything can happen and it's terrible thing. So you don't want that. So you do want to go on that level of complexity. You refuse that shape for the blockchain. You accept only a linear blockchain. And in that case, things are easy. Things are absolutely secure because there's no complication at all. You build the blockchain in, a, in, a, in an ordered manner and everything's fine. But if on the other side you say, okay, let's say that we want to have a very fast block production. So force will happen. So you cannot refuse the forks or you not pretend the forks are not there. So you welcome the forks. That's why you adopt a, a DAG structure because the DAG structure allows you to have multiple blocks produced at the same time and resolve possible conflicts later when you order the block with a consensus me mechanism that is, in this case is block DAG. So the difference is that on the blockchain uh, with proof of work, like for example, Bitcoin, you have that we you have just one miner that wins the competition and is sure about the amount of money he's going to have for winning the competition while all the others that tried that were honest miners that were actually doing their job honestly we receive nothing and this is somehow a, a, a problem this is a waste of power ethereum tried to solve that with uncle blocks and other stuff but it was like something like uh, something in between something very rusty on the other side if you say this is definitely going to happen we even want that to happen because it allows us to produce blocks faster we just have to deal with part of the problem meaning that okay uh, we all the blocks to happen to be created in parallel so we share the price of the block production between all the miners that produce the block. There is uncertainty, okay, but the market will figure it out. If you manage it, then maybe it's not that big problem. Another thing is that you are not wasting the work of the miners, meaning that if you have multiple miners that have produced honest block, there is no reason apparently to discard one because he did a good job, but he just got a split of a second later than the first one. So you keep a boat, you reward the boat, and, and this allows also for transactions inside the blocks to be validated multiple times. So if I have my transaction that is is validated in par appears in different blocks, it means that it's been validated by different blocks, so it's valid for multiple people. So it's stressing out the fact that my transaction is valid. On the other side, you have the problem that the same transaction is appearing in multiple blocks, so is basically bloating the DAG with a lot of information that is not needed to be there. It seems that there is a solution for that, that is scaling down and pruning the, the DAG, so 
it's, it's a problem that's been dealt with. I just didn't get to study that part, but I know there is something like this later on down the road. So the choice is we go multidimensional. We try to achieve the speed. We want to remain secure as much as possible. We also keep the same rules. The idea is that the DAG is just a multidimensional view of the blockchain, meaning that if you take the DAG and if you cut a, a few parameters in the algorithms, then you revert back to going to a blockchain that works exactly the same way. For example, uh, the miners in Caspa have two rules that they have to obey, uh, obey. The first is you have to broadcast the block as fast as you can. As, as The very second you, you, you build the block, you find the block, you broadcast it to the network. And the other rule is your new block must point to all the last previous blocks that are present in this moment in the DAG. So all the daddies that you can find, all the tips in, in the DAG. It's not different from Bitcoin. It's exactly the same thing on Bitcoin, just in multidimensional, meaning that on Bitcoin, the miner that finds the block has to broadcast it as fast as he can because he has economic incentive to do so in order to win the price. And the, the miner must point his new block to the previous one, to one block only because that's the on, all the blocks that you have available so in one case you have multiple blocks and you have to point to all the blocks that are available to you and exactly the same thing happens on bitcoin just the previous block is just one but the rules exactly remain the same you are applying the same rule on a multi-dimensional environment or on a multi on a du dual dimensional environment but the rules actually is not that different at all so this is just the beginning. I, I'm starting to uh, study the white papers, so Phantom, Ghost Dag. I will go after that on, on Dag Night. I'm reading other stuff. It's very, very interesting. It's allowing me to understand even better Bitcoin, as I said in the beginning. I think that this series of videos will go on longer than the summer just the, not just the summer a little bit more and uh, yeah I, it, it is fun it is useful it is let's say broadening my, my, my vision on what Bitcoin can do and what Bitcoin is also learning new stuff as I said there is no war there's no reason for a war in between those technologies I think they both have very interesting stuff to share and and and, and use diff maybe little different use cases at the moment yeah I, I will keep start looking at it so if you want to support me with a donation in Caspa you will find a, a, a link uh, uh, an address down below on the uh, description and so far well that's all I'll see you in the next video and see you bye